Hi, sorry. Um, guys, I don't have the ability to really make videos like I want to, so I'm just spewing them out. Um, so forgive me. Um, I want to talk about... Um, there's a big moral point in what God does, okay, that we can find in 1st Nephi 13. Okay, so we know our Bibles have been corrupted. The plain and precious things have been chopped up and taken out. And, of course, that doesn't mean our Bibles are incorrect. They are still correct. But, purposely, Satan has... Um, edited our Bibles so that people contend each other against obedience, first grace, um, seed lime wars, and all the all this kind of stuff. And we end up fighting each other over doctrine instead of um, uniting in the truth and power that we truly have. So, as frustrating as that sounds, but when you start reading the text, like on the archive, or at least I used to, this stuff will get restored. Um, I found... A version of the book of Malachi that contained all the stuff that was edited out and reading it it's like this is almost not fair it's like you know the point I'm trying to make is this is that it was God's will for our Bibles to be edited and it is prophesied but in the Book of Mormon does talk about that um, it was his will excuse me I had to get away from this guy um it was his will for that to happen. Why? Because it makes the light shine brighter in the darkness. When apostasy comes and corruption comes and, you know, all the false preachers are going after those who are young in the faith and, you know, trying to veer away, you know, the will of God. Number one, God always recompenses the, um, the prophecies say that. He never loses anyone. And number two, the the apostasy and the corruption makes those who seek the truth even stronger. <clears throat> and it makes the light shine in the darkness even brighter. So the fact that we have corrupted and chopped up Bibles and things are not so plain, it makes those who are really seeking the truth and those who really want the truth um, that much more discerned and that much more powerful in Christ. So it ends up serving as a blessing. So as we read about this stuff in 1st Nephi 13, we realize, you know, this is going to happen again to Kurt Cobain's book way in the future. But it's all of God's filtering process because you can't see the light unless you're in the darkness. So it just serves as a blessing that the light could be even that much stronger and that much refined and that much more precious. So, um, you know, it's just something to consider, a really beautiful lesson that I'm meditating on that God does and um, but this is what I'm learning and this is what I understand they embrace the apostasy you know like Paul says yeah people are preaching Christ this Christ that false this false that it's all trying to lead people astray but praise God because the gospel is still being preached to a lost and dying world it all has its purpose God will gather his sheep God will recompense they're not going to gain anybody they're not going to get any gain out of it whatsoever so, um, you know, like I said, the, if you're, the revelation of Peter tells us if you're, <coughs> if you're a false preacher and deceiving people, those who you are deceiving and have led astray, um, when God's judgment comes, the price of the cross comes at play, they're going to rule over you. They have authority over you and they will uproot that truth. So, um, I don't know. It's really cool. So I just wanted to, you know, it's something to meditate on. What's going on now? Um, our Bibles will get restored. Uh, you know, we're at a point, you know, I never knew. I always, I always believed the mainstream Christian doctrine that Jesus will return and rule and reign for a thousand years. But that's not true. Um, Jesus is going to come back as Moses. Jesus is going to come back as Elijah. And then, you know, I don't, I don't know. He's going to be with us for thousands of years. I never knew that. And so I was rereading Revelation 20 and going to God. And, and the answers the Lord gave me were, um, you know, 
it does make sense in the scriptures, but they're just the cliff notes to, to what's really going on. And these scriptures, our Bibles will get restored. There's so much truth that were edited out of our Bibles, and they will get restored. They will. So, um, you know, I believe we're heading into those times uh, soon. The wicked, I don't know if they'll see those times, but when they become mainstream, that's when uh, truth will prosper, prosper for at least four generations. So, yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to share that. Embrace the apostasy. God has a purpose in it. You know, praise God, the, the gospel is being preached. Um, though we have corrupted Bibles, it makes those who really love the truth that much stronger, that much more discerned. You know, we could cherry pick verses and make the Bible say whatever we want and argue over doctrine, but we find the doctrines in the parables. We find the, we find the truth in the stories, in the testimonies. And Satan can't perceive that stuff, and you really can't hide it. You can't corrupt it anyway. So it just makes us... The lights shine that much more brighter. Sorry, guys. I'll let you go. Thank you. God bless you.